Hey, this is Sart with Mythic MTG Tech with an awesome new series that we're doing here. We're starting with a mono white commander deck tech, and we're gonna work all the way through all of the color combinations out there in Magic. Each of the single mono colors, each of the guilds, each of the three colors, each of the four color commanders, colorless also, and five color decks. This is gonna be a 32 deck project for EDH, and it's really launching a bunch of new stuff that I'm doing with mainphasemtg.net. Each of these particular videos is gonna have a companion article that goes in depth on each of the different decks here. First, we're looking at eight and a half tails. This is a deck that I helped Corey Horn with many years ago and has been updated over time to be an awesome, fun deck. In order to get this deck though, you need to understand how protection works and the four main things that protection does. Reduces damage to zero from anything that has the quality that you have protection from. Enchanted or equipped permanence from the protected color, item, don't affect it. Cannot be blocked by things with the specific quality. So if I give something pro-white, white things cannot block it. Now, if it's already blocked, it's still gonna stay blocked. You do it before things can block. Finally, it cannot be the target of spells with that specified quality or abilities from sources of that quality. This basically lets Eight and a Half Tails or Mother of Ruins, who's super popular in Death and Taxes, one of my favorite decks, protect pretty much any of your permanents with regards to Eight and a Half Tails or your creatures with Mother of Ruins from targeted ways of destroying them. Now, Wrath of God is still gonna destroy everything out there. Even though it's a white source, you give it protection from white, that is not in the list of protected items. Understanding protection is essential to understanding this awesome deck. This deck has some classic, wonderful, fun stuff in it, including our Givian Archaeologist, so that you can bring back your Cage Sun or your Jitte. Let's look at the deck list here. Wonderful spread here, nice curve, very aggressive early start. A few things at the higher end of the curve, which we'll talk about a little bit later. This is a very reasonably priced EDH deck. It's about four to $500 total. There are three or four cards that bring that price up, including things like Stoneforge Mystic or our Givian Archaeologist. You can make this deck extremely competitive without the Archaeologist. Archaeologist just gives you a lot more staying power. This isn't a super, super competitive deck, but it does have the ability to go over the top and one-shot individual players or to get some massive card advantage going on. One of my favorite things in this deck is the Stoneforge Mystic package. Stoneforge Mystic can go get several things. The current list is only running one of the swords. If you wanted to add some upgrades, to this deck, you could definitely add more swords. It also has some nice budget equipment in here, including uh, Grafter's Exoskeleton and Fire Shrieker. You can often one-shot people with this deck. Jite is an absolute must in this deck. If you're gonna go for one high-rank card to go with your Stoneforge Mystic, Jite is definitely one to grab. It can just control the entire board. There are some cards in here that just blow people away. Cataclysm is the strongest card in this deck because it hits lands, and it's perfect for this deck because you usually have an artifact out there, your commander, and you don't need much land to make this deck work. The Cataclysmic Gear Hulk and Tragic Arrogance are also wonderful additions for this deck. Tragic Arrogance, read this card. You, as the player who plays it, gets to choose which permanents are kept. So powerful, way underplayed card in Commander. You can put swords on almost anything in this deck. Eight and a half tails himself does not tap to use his ability. He's a great sword bearer. Anything with double strike is really, really nice. Mirrodin Crusader can cruise through your enemies really quickly. There's some Wonderful control cards in here that aren't going to make you very many friends, but are going to shut down your opponents. Hushwing Griffin, Linvala, Spirit of the Labyrinth, and Thalia. Thalia is so good. In fact, I might even consider the new Thalia to go with 
the old Dahlia in this deck. Another really nice package that is in here is the Weathered Wayfarer package. Weathered Wayfarer is not just land tax. It doesn't just grab you basics. It grabs you any land out there. And most other EDH decks are going to be ramping more than this deck. So make sure to have a nice selection of utility lands to go with Weathered Wayfarer and get the cards that you need to crush through your opponent or to prevent things with Maze of Ith or Core Haven. Really, really nice card. Taking a look at the list, what would you add? What would you change? Please put it in the comments. Also head over and check out the full article. I will have a link to the article as soon as it is published. Thank you to everybody who supports the channel. I greatly appreciate it. We got a lot of videos coming out here in the next few weeks. Anybody who wants to support the channel, please check out the revamped Patreon. I've got a whole new video coming out about that. And thank you to my sponsor, chess.com. Check out the other videos that are here. And there'll be a full list as we work our way through 32 commander decks. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see awesome commander decks every few weeks. Until next time, choose your cards wisely. ha ha ha.